I was lying awake with a dismal headache and my sleep was put off by anxiety. For I feared that my plan of explaining how man had evolved would provoke notoriety. I had left London town for the village of Down and a home that is quiet and regal. Though I get no repose and I can't even doze without dreaming I'm back on the beagle. We are rounding the horn in a furious storm and our progress is measured in inches. We're rolling around and the crew's almost drowned and they scatter like terrified finches. Fitzroy's in a mood and he's coming unglued and cannot say where our next port is. I fear he's unwell for he sprouted a shell and turns into a monstrous tortoise. He ignores the enormity of his deformity, cannot the scales and the rest of it, and allows his perfection as close to perfection as my ears may suggest of it. After 10,000 miles, the Galapagos Isles, now I'm tense and exceedingly weary. But I fear that this place will dissolve in disgrace when I use it to further my theory. And I scramble ashore and the sea lions roar. Then I hear a contemptuous snicker. I glance up in a tree and there, what do I see? Seven chimps and an Anglican vicar. It's not hard to tell that they're all mad as hell. And I ask, what's the source of your fury? His grace's retort is silence in court, for I am your judge and your jury. With a shriek, I awake and it's all a mistake. The iguana is really a kitten. No, no chimps are in sight on this miserable night, and no wonder I'm back in Great Britain. But the darkness has passed, and it's daylight at last, and the night's been too long. Ditto, ditto, my song. And thank goodness, they're both of them finished. <laughs>